I wanted to share some of the key takeaways from this year's NatCat Sigma. First and foremost, 2024 was a very expensive year for the insurance sector with insurance losses of approximately 137 billion US dollars. What perhaps is more remarkable is if we look at the average growth of five to 7% trending year on year, 2025 could be even on average as much as 145 billion US dollars of insurance losses. But what we should recall is 2024 was also not a year when the so-called peak perils dominated, meaning that the bulk of the losses came from secondary perils. In a year when we could have peak losses, this means, and Sigma projects a 1 in 10% chance of it happening, a 1 in 10 year event probability, that 2025 could see insurance losses of as high as 300 billion US dollars. But I'd like to focus a little bit more on topics within the region. I think first it's very important to highlight that flood remains a preeminent challenge and threat and peril for Western, Southern Europe and Middle East and Africa. We obviously saw major events in October in Spain where the Valencia floods cost 4.7 billion US dollars of insurance loss, the majority being picked up by the consortium. But equally, we saw the floods in Dubai, which cost three to four billion US dollars, driven by urbanization, climate change, and increased accumulation of exposures. Why do I highlight these points? I think it's two things. First, I think it highlights the importance of data, particularly in these markets, to make sure we understand accumulation. And secondly, it's very important to point out that in the case of Europe, 70% of these losses go uninsured. This highlights the great importance of public-private partnerships, preventive measures, and again, better understanding of risk exposures. We talked about flood, which cost the uh, regions of Europe, Middle East, and Africa as much as $11 billion of insurance losses last year, spread among many different markets. But it's also important to emphasize in this range risks like wildfire. This year, we've spent a lot of attention on the wildfires in California, but Europe is not immune from these either. And we are going to need to pay more attention to this, as well as to secondary events like severe convective storm. If we remember the big hail storms in Italy two years ago. If we can encourage insureds, both corporations, but also policyholders to better prevent and invest in mitigation, we can certainly make insurance losses and economic losses lower. I'd like to raise three ideas. The first, sound underwriting, relies on good data. And that means we should invest in understanding our exposures, how they accumulate, and also how we share that information with policyholders and insurers. The second topic is build back better. We at Swiss Re are investing a lot more time with partners to understand how we incentivize prevention and mitigation to policyholders whether retail or corporate clients, so that in our insurance policies and in our reinsurance treaties, people are incentivized to invest in those preventive mechanisms, which reduce not just the insurance loss, but also the economic loss to society. And the third point I'd like to talk about is claims. How do we ensure that we are handling claims in an efficient and highly professional manner? Because this is not just about preventing items like loss creep, where the losses develop unexpectedly over time. But more fundamentally, how we ensure the value proposition of insurance and reinsurance, that we help people get back on their feet when bad things happen. How that value proposition, we stay true to it and bring value to the entire sector, making the world more resilient.